Hello 3D printing friends. Today on the BB3D channel we're going to do something that'll really create a buzz. Stick around and we'll get into it right after this. I'm Brian and you are watching BB3D. Hi, welcome back. Hey, if you're new here and you're wanting to learn about cool 3D printer upgrades, 3D modeling, and other 3D printing related stuff, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Okay, so today we're continuing our Getting Started in Electronics series with the Elegoo Super Starter Kit for Uno, and in this episode, we're going to do something that will really create a buzz, like literally create a buzz, because we're going to learn how to control both active and passive buzzers using the Uno and some code. See, there are two kinds of these little piezoelectric buzzers. There are passive ones and active ones. I'll talk about how they're different in just a minute, but first, I want to talk about how they're similar. And they both work by means of the piezoelectric effect. And what is that, you might be wondering? Well, the piezoelectric effect is the ability of certain materials to generate an electric charge in response to applied mechanical stress. It's like the igniter on this brule torch. When I press the button, a spring-loaded mechanism applies a sudden compression force to the piezoelectric material, which generates enough voltage to create a spark to ignite the gas. Now, an interesting characteristic of the piezoelectric effect is that it is reversible, meaning that materials which generate electricity when a physical force is applied also work in reverse. A physical force occurs when electricity is applied. So basically, when you briefly deform the material, it generates electricity. And when you apply electricity, it briefly deforms the material. And that's how these little buzzers work. By applying electricity to them in a series of pulses, we can cause the material inside to deform and then spring back to its original shape. And if this is done fast enough, the material will vibrate and that will cause the air around them to move, which our ears perceive as a ridiculously annoying beeping sound. Oh God, make it stop. Now, the difference between passive and active piezo buzzers is that the active ones include an oscillator circuit which sends electric pulses to the piezoelectric material when power is applied. This makes them simpler to use because you only have to provide power to get a steady beeping sound. Without the oscillator circuit, you have to generate the pulses yourself, either with additional circuitry or in code. However, active buzzers generally cost more because they include that extra circuitry. Now, you can tell them apart by looking at the underside of them. The passive ones have two leads, which are the same length, and go directly to a circuit board. This kind of buzzer is not polarized, so it doesn't care which lead is positive and which is negative. The active ones have a short lead and a long lead, both of which disappear into a layer of epoxy. That epoxy is there to protect the oscillator circuit from damage. But because of the extra circuitry, this kind of buzzer is polarized, and it does care which lead is positive and which is negative. And, like an LED, the shorter lead is the negative or ground lead. So, let's see how to use an active buzzer in a project. Get your Uno and your breadboard, and a couple of jumper wires to connect things. And, get both buzzers out of the kit. Now, get the active buzzer. In my kit, the active buzzer has a white sticker covering the top of its case. Yours may or may not, so make sure you've got the active one. And again, it's the one with a short lead and a long lead and the epoxy on the bottom. Plug the active buzzer into the breadboard. Connect a jumper wire from a ground pin on the Uno to the short lead on the buzzer. Then connect a jumper wire from pin 3 on the Uno to the long lead on the buzzer. And that's it. The wiring is done. Now, the code for this is simple too, so we can just type it in. You'll find that it's remarkably similar to the code that we use to turn an LED on and off. Open the Arduino IDE and create a new sketch. So, as always, we get a nice template for our sketch with the setup and the loop functions nicely laid out for us. Let's add a couple of blank lines at the beginning of the file, though. And we'll declare an integer variable named buzzer pin and set its value to 3 because that's the pin we connected to the buzzer. So type int buzzer pin equals 3 and then a semicolon. Now, down in the setup function, let's set the buzzer pin as an output. So type pin mode, open parenthesis buzzer pin, comma output, close parenthesis, 
and a semicolon. Okay, now that's done. Let's get down into the loop function. In here, we'll use digital write to turn the buzzer on and off and delay statements to set the durations. So type digital write, open parenthesis buzzer pin, comma high, close parenthesis, semicolon, and press return. Then type delay, open parenthesis 500, close parenthesis, and a semicolon, and press return to set a half second delay. Type digital write, open parenthesis buzzer pin, comma low, close parenthesis, and a semicolon, and press return, and then type another delay, open parenthesis 500, close parenthesis, and a semicolon, to set another half second delay. So this will loop over and over, making a beep for half a second, and then being quiet for half a second. And that's it for the code, so let's save it. Click File, then click Save. I'm going to save it on the desktop and name it Active Buzzer. Now we can upload this sketch and find out how it sounds. Plug a USB cable into your Uno and then plug the other end of it into your computer. Make sure you've got the Arduino Uno board selected in Tools, Boards, and make sure you've got the correct port selected in Tools, Port. Then click the Upload button in the IDE. This is a very small sketch, so it'll only take a second to upload. You'll know it's done because... Yeah, that. Uh. Okay, I unplugged the jumper wire from pin 3 so I can talk. Holy heck, that's annoying. It sounds like a dump truck in reverse gear. I'm pretty sure that's not what they mean when they say you should back up your projects. Well... Why don't we try turning this into something that ticks instead of something that beeps? Let's change those durations in the code. Let's turn it on for one millisecond and off for 999 milliseconds. That should get us a very, very short beep once per second. And it should sound like the ticking of a clock. Okay, let's upload that and uh, then we'll plug that jumper wire back into pin three. There. Now it's just making a tiny tick sound once a second. That's much less annoying that way. So now let's see how to use a passive buzzer in a project. Unplug the Uno from the computer. Then remove the active buzzer from the breadboard. Then get the passive buzzer. It's the one with the two leads that are the same length. Plug it into the breadboard where the active one was. The passive one isn't polarized, so it doesn't matter which pin on the buzzer goes to ground and which one goes to pin 3 on the Uno. So we're done with the wiring. All we needed to do was replace the active buzzer with the passive one. Now when we used the active buzzer, you probably noticed that it only makes one tone when it's on. That's because its oscillator runs at a single frequency. But a passive buzzer doesn't have a built-in oscillator circuit, so you have a lot more control over the sound it can make. Having more control, though, means writing more code. To cause a passive buzzer to generate a sound, we have to send it a rapid series of on and off pulses, and we have to write the code to do that ourselves. But the code is still simple, so we can still just type it in. And as we go, we can add more to it to get different sounds. So let's make another new sketch. We'll start again by adding a couple of blank lines at the top of the file. And just like before, we'll declare an integer variable named buzzer pin and set its value to 3. So type int buzzer pin equals 3 semicolon. Also, like before in the setup function, we'll set buzzer pin as an output. So type pin mode, buzzer pin, output, and a semicolon. Now we're headed down into the loop function. In here, we're going to be turning the buzzer on and off rapidly, which will cause the piezoelectric material to vibrate and thus produce sound. So type digital write, buzzer pin high, and a semicolon, and press return. Then type delay 5, a semicolon, and press return. Type digital write, buzzer pin low, and a semicolon, and press return. And finally type delay 5, and a semicolon, and we're done. This will send a pulse that's on for 5 milliseconds and off for 5 milliseconds. Okay, let's save this one as passive buzzer. Then let's plug the Uno into the computer again, and we'll upload this sketch to it. Now we're getting a much lower pitch than we did with the active buzzer. And now it actually sounds like a buzzer instead of a beeper. 
By adjusting the delay times, we can adjust the pitch of the sound. Let's change the delays to one millisecond instead of five milliseconds. And then upload that to the Uno. Oh, and let me plug this back into pin three. So there's a higher pitch and that's about as high as we can go with this code. Now you've probably noticed that with the passive buzzer, we're getting a constant tone. But if we want to do something like that dump truck backup beeper, we're going to have to change our code a little bit. Right now, the pulses that we're sending with the digital right high and low commands, along with the delays, are repeating over and over because they're inside the loop function. But if we want to be able to pause after a certain number of pulses have been sent, we need a loop within the loop. For this, we'll use a for loop. I think I covered for loops in the past, but let's type in the basics of a for loop and I'll kind of go over it again a little bit. Type for open parenthesis int space i equals zero semicolon i is less than 250 semicolon and i plus plus and close the parenthesis. Note that we do not end it with a semicolon and then press return. Type an open curly brace and press return again. When you do this, the Arduino IDE automatically creates the closing curly brace for you, which is kind of handy. And that's the shell of a for loop. Now here's what the stuff inside the parenthesis means. We start by declaring an integer variable i, which is used to count how many times the loop has looped. Then we have this part, which has to be true for the loop to keep running. In this case, we're saying that as long as our counter i is less than 250, we're going to keep on looping. And then we have this thing here, this i++ thing. That increments the value of i by 1. That is, it takes the current value of i, adds 1 to it, and stores it back in i. So the result is that the loop starts out with i being 0, and since that's less than 250, we'll add 1 to i, and then we'll do all of the code that's in the curly braces, and then we'll do that again and again and again until we get to the point where the value of i is greater than 250, at which point we'll stop running that loop. So let's say that we want to beep and then pause and then beep and then pause forever. Well, the first thing that we need to do is move the digital write and delay code into the for loop. So highlight these four lines, cut that text, then click inside the for loops curly braces and paste the text back in. You may want to clean up the indents a little bit. Okay, so as it stands, that's going to send 250 pulses to the buzzer, and then send another 250 pulses to the buzzer, and then send another 250 pulses to the buzzer. But to get the backup beeper effect, we have to pause in between these 250 pulse bursts. So right after the for loop, let's add another delay. This will give us a delay after the 250 pulses. Let's type delay 500 and a semicolon, now let's talk about the values that I chose for the for loop and the delay. Each pulse is two milliseconds long. It's one millisecond on and one millisecond off. So by looping 250 times, it should take about 500 milliseconds to complete. So I match that with a 500 millisecond delay. The result is that we should have a half second beep and a half second pause. So let's upload that to the Uno and find out if that's what we really get. And uh, let me plug this back in so we can hear it. Ah, there, now it's doing what we want and it'll keep doing it until we get tired of it and unplug something or get irritated and punch something. Now we could change this up a little bit too. Let's copy the entire for loop and replace the delay with a second for loop. Then we can change the second loop's delay values a little bit. First, change the loop counter limit from 250 to half of that value, 125. Then, change the two delay values inside the loop from 1 to 2. Now, let's upload this to the Uno and see what we get. Oh, and we'll plug this in to see what we get. And we get a European emergency vehicle. Yay! Huh. Okay, so clearly we have more control over the passive buzzer than the active one, but it can take more code to exercise that control. If you were so inclined, you could sit down and figure out how to play specific music notes and then program the UNO to play a song. Fortunately though, somebody wrote a code library for the UNO called Pitches. It makes it easy to program musical notes. If you look in the code folder that came on the CD or that you downloaded in the software from Elegoo, and open up the folder for Lesson 7. 
you'll see an INO file and the pitches zip file. Now that library isn't installed yet, but the Lesson 7 code uses it, so let's get that library loaded. In the IDE, click the Sketch menu, go to Include Library, and select Add Zip Library. Navigate down to the Lesson 7 folder, click the Pitches.zip file, and click the Choose button. And that's all there is to loading that code library. Now open up the passive buzzer INO file from that folder and upload that code to the UNO. Now that code uses pin 8 for the buzzer, so move the wire that we've been using on pin 3 over to pin 8. And when you do that, you'll find that the UNO is playing a musical scale. It does the DO RE MI thing, pauses for two seconds, and then does it again. I'm going to make it stop. If you look at the code, you'll see that the notes in the melody are defined on line 8, and these notes are in an array. We haven't talked about arrays yet, but basically an array is just a list. So this is a list of the notes in the order that they're going to play. You can add to the list following the format that you see there. The word note, an underscore, then the note, and the octave. So note underscore C5 is like a middle C or something. If you change the number of notes in the melody array, you need to change the number in the for loop here to match that count. So why not explore a little and see if you can make the UNO play some simple music? Just key in the notes. And on that note, we need to wrap this one up. Now, I don't want to get into treble over some baseless claim about the length of this video, so we'll stop now before this whole thing just goes over a cliff. Thanks for making it all the way to the end, and thanks so much for all the likes, comments, and shares. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss any cool 3D printing stuff. If you liked this episode, please give it a thumbs up. If not, give it a thumbs down, but either way, please share your thoughts in the comments. If you like the content I'm producing and you'd like to help out, check out the description for ways you can do that. Shopping using the links down there really helps no matter what you're buying, and heck, even just subscribing is a great way to support the channel and help keep me making these videos for you. Well, I'm going to tinker around with this a little bit more. You go explore and make something cool, and I'll see you next time.